northwest. Cotton may, lo no, may no longer be king, but could the old factories help solve our housing crisis? Yeah, in Greater Manchester alone, nearly half of the old mills have gone. Historic England says that these monuments of our past could yet help us in the future, as Stuart Flinders has been finding out. The rattle of the loom used to be the soundtrack to life here. You only have to go back maybe two generations to the days when just about everybody worked in the mill if you lived in one of the old northwest towns. Those days are gone, and so too are many of the mills. Once again, smokeless chimneys are appearing in the Lancashire cotton towns as the mills close down. First, the mills closed, and then they began to disappear. In Greater Manchester alone, 45% of the mills have gone in the last 30 years. Some of those that remain are dying a slow death. There have been countless fires at this one in Blackburn. Historic England, the organisation protecting our heritage, says we should save the mills and help solve the housing crisis. If we took all the vacant space across textile mills in Greater Manchester and Lancashire, we could provide up to 25,000 new homes. So instead of building on open, greenbelt countryside, why not take advantage of these purpose-built buildings which provide fantastic character-filled spaces in which people can live? It's already happening. This factory was named the Royal Mill after a visit by the King and Queen in the 1940s. Now it's home to Katie Ray. We really love the exposed brickwork, the columns, the fact that you're buying something quite unique. And, and do you know much about the history of this place, what it was like when it was a working mill? Um, yes, we know that it was one of the first mills to use electricity. Certainly this area, Ancoats, um, obviously birthplace of the Industrial Revolution. <laughs> Not every old mill could be turned into homes, of course, but are they worth saving anyway? They still have the historic steam engine at this mill in Lee. Now they're hoping to create sports facilities, artist studios, maybe a theatre here. The building is attractive, it is big. Our consultation with local community showed that out of 552 people who we talked to, only four said demolish it. The wider survey says 85% of the general population want to keep our mills because we've lost so many of them. Could these symbols of the past provide answers to some of the problems of the present? Stuart Flinders, BBC Northwest Tonight. Interesting idea, isn't it? Mm. Not, not new. I mean, the yuppies used to live in converted oh, yeah. mill yeah. buildings. Warehouses, yeah. very trendy. Speaking of the yuppies all grew up, <laughs> and got jobs as sports presenters. <laughs> Speaking yeah. of the opposite yeah. of trendy. Yeah. Uh, Rich is here, as you can see. Tommy Fleetwood. No yeah. wonder he's got a big smile on his face. Solve the housing crisis. Adam McLean reports. They're the fabric of our industrial history. The looms in our textile mills were once the busiest in the world, but over the past 30 years, nearly half of the mills have been lost. Four out of five adults think they're as important to preserve as our castles and our stately homes, and the overwhelming majority don't want to see them demolished and lost. And they have a particular opportunity for housing. If we took all the vacant space in Greater Manchester's and Lancashire's textile mills, we could deliver around 25,000 new homes. Over four years, a team of volunteers have worked hard to restore the mill's engine. It was once the heart of a busy production line, powering looms across the building. Until a fortnight ago, it hadn't moved in 30 years. The strange thing was nobody applauded. Every, you know, everyone said, well, why didn't we applaud? We were so surprised, you know, so pleased. You know. So if you've ever seen grown men, grown engineers looking close to crying, that was the day. <laughs> The restoration of this engine is just the start of the regeneration of Lee Spinner's mill. It's hoped that by attracting developers and businesses that all of the mill can be put back into use. The steam engine is the jewel in the crown here, but yeah, we've got to recognise this is only 2% of the mill. So we have another 98% to go at and the purpose of the exercise is to restore the building 
to retain the company Lee Spinners Limited here with their 50 odd jobs and to then use the vacant space of which there's an awful lot here. A quarter of a million pound grant will now be spent on repairing the roof under which it's hoped industry will thrive. Adam McLean, ITV News, Lee. buildings with lots of stories to tell. Uh, let's get on to sport now and is Yes, we're finally here. Look at the time. Nearly ten past three. I was sat waiting at the bus stop for the five to two one in Great Harwood where I live. And when the Accrington bus come, number 15, I said, oh. I said, no, it's the other side. I said, what? I said, I've done away with that side of the road surface. It now goes <laughs> from the other side of the road, turns round and goes, oh. Bloody hell, so what time is that then? Half past two. So I just got the half past two and I've just checked the return bus. And apparently it's quarter past seven. Anyway, we'll see, won't we? That's about right, quarter past seven. I think I'll have had enough by then. <laughs> right, I'll have Luke on the market. I need a fluffy rug for me cat. And while I'm here, I thought I'd mention this quaint little railway station. You can actually get a connection to Settle and then go on the Settle to Coil Isle service, but only in summer. I think it runs for three months, something like that. Right, I'll have a look on the market. This is a nice old pub. I like all those Victorian ornamental chimneys and carvings. Hello, yes. I know it's about an hour since I uh, started filming. I went in that wine bar near the bus station. Then went on the market. Got some... Uh, Fluffy cat beds, four pound inch, got two of them, the blue one and the fawn one. And this is in the new inn. They normally have a crackling coal fire in here. I used to come in here after work when I worked here. In Clutter, I mean. And when this pub dates from. threadbare but I mean these are original bench seats aren't they? <laughs> this beer isn't up to much moor houses. Yeah. yeah I'll go up on the main street have a couple up there in those really old pubs okay, from the 1700s and then go down to the Boland Brewery I got what I came for, cat beds. <laughs> well, I must say, I'm a bit disappointed. Look at this ancient pub, dates from the 1700s. And it's got this covered entrance with spike gates. Not too good, but you know, pretty damn old. Whitewashed walls. And yet the inside is all modern and horrible and nothing on the walls. Just blank white walls with a few old clocks on the walls, but no interesting things. Just bland. Looks like there's some Wainwright ale and left after it on the bar. Well, I have three courses. As I keep saying, it's a bit hit and miss, real ale. 
Yeah, you'd think it'd be all the world, you know, all dark and dingy. <laughs> but a bit of atmosphere, not white, white bloody plain straight walls and no woodwork anywhere. It's going to modernise the hell out of them and ruin them, I think. You know, if this was in York, it'd be all dark brown floorboards and dark walls and little flickering lanterns everywhere. You know what I mean? Not modern. Still nice gates. Well, hello, can hear me. Just been in the Swan and Royal, had a whiskey, Chavas Regal. But I'm on my way down to this old pub here, the White Lion. And look at this, this was the Victoria pub, it's now, it's now called Fat Face, a bloody clothing shop. What's going on? An old Victorian pub closed down and now it's closing. What's going on? So many changes since I was here last. I'll go in the white lion there. It's pouring down by the way. This is this oldie worldy. It's actually a shop that has been converted into a sort of wine bar. And they've got it spot on, this is just what I was talking about. Look at these old steps. I'll film the outside when I leave it, but... The barman just said about the steampunk look. Look at, <laughs> look at these old valves. Well, they're probably modern, new thing, a bit dark. I was saying I like the steampunk look, corrugated iron on the ceiling, probably can't see. The random stonework, steampunk type of lights, although you can get them from Aldi, they're LED. Sort of uh, old filament style, style of things. Don't forget the duck. Yeah, this is just what I meant. Something different, and it looks like it's been here 500 years, and yet it was a shop. An incredible look. Another couch. More radiation, more random storm That's what is it? Next door is a real L bar and I said is it not not through? Is it <laughs> A lot of people will say that you should knock it through, have some real ales on. Old steam, steam packet chest. Yeah, well done, excellent look. Men to the left because women are always right. <laughs> Well, 
just left the uh, white, sorry it's the white lane, not, not the white swan. <laughs> the swan's down there in darkness, sorry, the white lane. Well, when you're slightly pissed, you do forget the, <laughs> the names of the pub. Yeah, this uh, new bar, which is incredible, is called the ESCCC. I thought, what, what kind of name is that? But like I said, they've got the look spot on. It looks like it's been here 500 years, especially with that. So it's a dungeon type of cellar, an upstairs steampunk room with all the old valves and dials and clocks on. Amazing, well done. Who's designed that? Someone with a bit of vision, well done, excellent. Yeah, so I've just been in a white lane where the pool room was. I can't think of that, because I used to work in roofing. There's a name for those peak and trough roofs, I forgot what they're called though. But as it's raining, I won't dwell on the subject. I'll try and edit those old pictures into here again of this, this area in, uh, in the 1800s. There was a grain merchant there and now it's a library with a clock on. Yeah, it's a nice old town, all dating from 16, 1700 and whatever. <laughs> I've just been in next door, I didn't film in there. I said uh, you should knock it into one. Real ale's next door in a little tiny two room bar and a snug and then this one. So yeah, a lot of people say that, we should not through. <laughs> right, Emporium next, quite a long walk away. Yes, I expect, <laughs> I expect you can see what I can see, just blackness. <laughs> Clitheroe's got a lot of these old courtyards which date from the 1700s. You know, little galleried homes. But look at this, I saw a sign for a record shop but it's closed for some reason even though it's not 5 o'clock yet. The time frame, curiosity, you know, curiosity, <laughs> shop and records. And uh, I was just thinking there's actually a chap who's been on TV, Simon Entwistle, and he does ghost walks and I bet this is one of his routes. Walking down these ancient narrow passageways. I mean, York is full of these, but Clitheroe just has half a dozen or so. Why is it when you had a few drinks, <laughs> your teeth give out? Yeah, look at this, can you see? Little narrow alleyways. These were sheltered from the rain. Imagine going on a pub crawl in the rain. Isn't that lovely? Isn't that fascinating? I just love this history. I presume it's one of the gates here with your padlock on it. We padlocked up one bit when it's a bit later on, we'll be locked up. That's another interesting pub, the Emporium. Just look at the decor, it's incredible. Nice lighting, huge mirrors, statues, pillars. Not a chandelier, so it's a huge globe with a uh, shiny droplet. <laughs> a bust of uh, Mark Anthony or whoever. And a champagne bottle with a candle in. I just called in a shop that sold aftershave and I've got my favourite cheap aftershave, Joe Van Musk. Can you see? I got two bottles and some of it I've used it all up and I'm on brute now, £3.50 a bottle. <laughs> so I'm glad that I've got some Joe Van Musk. Yeah, lovely here. I just got a Macallan, 375 for a single measure, cheaper than the uh, Javas Regal. Macallan holds the world record for the most expensive 
boss Lewitsky I was told I think a Japanese businessman paid a quarter million for an old bottle from the uh, 1920s or something come here me. hello come here me. Uh, so this is the Emporium they do meals they smell food in this very elegant surrounding that's what I like I like those palms as well in the huge urns. I was going to say, down in the 10th century, I went into a YMCA charity shop and for 9 99 the reproduction would look very nice. Some corner cabinets with wooden glass. You know the corner cabinets that fit, in <laughs> fit into a corner. 9 99 I couldn't believe it. Nobody wants dark wood furniture anymore apparently. It was all the rage ten years ago and I like it. And I thought of asking, do they do a delivery service? I'd pay ten pounds for them to deliver it to my house, but it's unlimited for space. Where would I put a corner unit? You know, to put all my cur the glass cabinet above of course, it's about six foot high. But what would I put in it and where would I put it? There's just no room in my house, sadly. But 9.99, I couldn't believe it. Perfect condition with a key to open the glass cabinet and the lower storage area. Anyway, that's all for now. Thank you very much. Hello, hello. Yes, can you hear me? I'm here in the uh, Poland Brewery. Very nice, look at the deco. All the world in mill floors up above. And so it's a steampunk light fitting. And I've just ordered a hot dog, £12 with pulled pork, etc. etc. Cheese and coleslaw with French fries. I nearly got a double burger, that was a similar price, but uh, I do like pulled pork. And it's easier to chew with my old teeth. So yeah, next door is the engine room, so I'll have a look around there afterwards. But yeah, I'm starving now. All I had last night, like I said, was uh, a full package of garlic bread slices and some soup. Chicken soup, so I'm hungry. So, I'll see how long uh, it takes to serve. I've just got, uh, can you hear me, hello, I moved the microphone a bit nearer, I've just got some chocolate beer, just a half, I think that's the best thing with real ale, just get a half and you, you're not sort of uh, stuck with a pint of the stuff if it tastes horrible, <laughs> so I've just got a half of this chocolate beer, it's about four and a half percent. And I thought, if you don't object, I'll have a, a quick shift around this enormous bar. It's just a big oblong bar with dozens and dozens of different beers. It's amazing. A real ale enthusiast dream. So I think I'll have a look around in case we'll just see if anyone whinges. You see all these beers. Ellen Blonde, old telephone box, big metal urn. This is all the bowl and brewery stuff. Going from weak beer to strong beer, four and a half percent. That's what I got. Triple chocoholic. Darth Vader, Robinson's White Milk Stout 5%, Brew number 37, whatever that is, Cider 5.2%, Foreign Stuff, Strawberry and Lime, Ricorda League Cider, Strawberry Lime, Landlady IPA, More Ball and Brewery, and Harrier Ball and Gold Pheasant Plucker. <laughs> and the 
this is the chimney room and the engine room is just a bit further on beer hall food yeah I just I guess, sorry I've ordered a hot dog similar to the emporium got candles and champagne bottles it's lovely though isn't it what a place Love burning. But the camera's picking all this stuff, it's a bit dark throughout some time. And this is the engine room. Please do not touch all the old workings from the original mill. You see. But this is what I said, all these things to look at. It's just a big uh, success story of the triumph of design over uh, practicality. I say practicality, but I mean they must be doing a roaring trade with the real ales and the food. But the decor comes with it, doesn't it? Look at that old uh, power wheel powering all the looms on them ropes. Well that was a steam powered wheel which powered all the uh <laughs> please do not climb on me i'm all tired and awaiting some much lead much needed tender loving care <laughs> it's too dark to see isn't it yeah what a good idea Then is the back end of the power wheel. Pitch it so dark, can you see that? I'll have to review it when I get home. Not Chesterfield sofas either, but you know what I mean? Button back leather sofas are always nice. Yeah, that's good, what a good idea. Excellent. Well done, Top Marks, for a very inventive idea. <coughs> Having a food and beer emporium within the workings of an old mill. With potted palm plants, champagne bottles with candles in, steampunk type of oldy worldy lamp. I mean, having watched Salvage Hunter, that chap uh, from North Wales, he'll pay a fortune for these old lamps. Isn't that lovely? Energy efficiency in the steam age. I should have filmed all this in the daylight. Well, I'll go back to my seats and await my hot dog. An old gaslight fitting. Excellent, excellent. Yes, my meal has just arrived, the hot dog, very nice, with fried coleslaw and pulled pork and all sorts of stuffing. Delicious, I've uh, ate a small portion of it and so far it's lovely. A bit hot, but, but so that's why, well it said jalapenos, that's why it's hot, I like hot stuff. I mean, it's certainly better than going to the Indian across the road, which was my original intention. Delicious. I heartily recommend coming here for the interesting millworks, delicious food, a vast array of beers, and I wish I'd come here straight from the bus at three o'clock. <laughs> It would have been a bit brighter then. I hope all the films come out of all the engine workings. 
But I think I'll end it here. Thank you for watching. And I'm going to carry on with my meal. Yes, excuse the chomping. Absolutely delicious. I bet every morsel, even the leaves. <laughs> Not sure what the leaves were, but I bet everything. I told you I was hungry, didn't I? All I had yesterday was um, a pack of garlic bread baguettes and some chicken soup. So I was hungry. Plus a bit of a pub crawl always puts you in the appetite for a, a good hearty meal and that was delicious. I did intend on going to the Indian across the road, Spice Lounge, but um, I imagine tomorrow I'll be suffering if I had an Indian, but uh, this was just lovely. Got another pint of chocolate beer. And what time is it? Half past six. I've got an hour to kill before the last bus. So I should have some more beer or a couple more whiskies. <laughs> I think I'll go up to the Brown Cow where I used to go after work and uh, have a couple of drinks to Well, lovely day out. Thank you very much for watching. Come to Clitheroe, Road, come to the Holmes Mill for a very nice meal and lovely surroundings. Look at that, isn't that incredible. I'm going to include a couple of television clips from yesterday that run about. Why demolish old mill buildings when they could be put to better use out of accommodation? Because some of those giant mills, like the one on the television news report in Lee, could house thousands of people if they were to spend a bit of money renovating them. Yeah, thank you very much. I was just saying on Granada Reports last night, there was a report about renovating old mills instead of bloody demolishing them. Oh, and it's shown an old mill in Lee and it said yeah they could they could potentially accommodate a thousand people where the windows are making them into an apartment two bedrooms in a living room and do the same right through the mill a vast mill in Lee oh well we we're going to demolish it and make I said no don't demolish it make it into exactly. places like this there's so many potential possibilities exactly yeah and yeah Smith and nephew or something like that. Yeah, that's been Ooh, can you see? It's one of those cobbled alleyways down to a lower level of the street. It's raining rather heavily, so it's a heavy drizzle. So I'll sign off here, I think. I think this is one of those alleyways that the ghost walk goes down. <laughs> pity, pity I'm not. <laughs> At the right time of the week for the ghost walk. Ooh. <laughs> I've had plenty of spirits today. So all in all, it's been a good day out. Got two uh, comfortable, fluffy cat beds. Had a nice meal, had a few beers, a few nice whiskies. Lots of changes to the town since I was last year, 10 years ago. But I recommend you come here and go to the Holmes Mill for a nice meal. Right, thank you for watching. Bye for now. This is another of those spooky alleyways. I thought it was the same one, but the other one had a gate at the end. This has no gate. <laughs> All dating from 17 something. No big deal, it's only an alleyway, but it is quite spooky. As soon as the gate at that end, and just whitewashed walls. Mm. There is a famous cowman's, cowman's famous sausage shop. I don't know if you can see it or not. They have about 100 different recipes for the sausages, apparently. That's a big deal. And we're back at the Rose and Crown, which, like I said, was a bit disappointing. Ruined by modernising it. Instead of uh, wooden panel rooms, it was just bland white walls. A few interesting old clocks. And about six old clocks on the walls. 
not working but I thought is that all he can do and all coaching in like that and they've ruined it silly sods it's uh, 12 ensuite bedrooms so it's a, an accommodation pub and it could be a lot better This is the Swan Courtyard at the back of the Swan and Royal, the old pub from 1730s. There's this courtyard full of uh, sort of boutiques, a bridal boutique there, beauty boy, muddy frogs, whatever that is, probably a kid's shop, Mansell's coffee, tea and dining, bar and grill, bar and grill. Oh. It's a bar and grill, why is it not open? Oh, Tuesday closed. <laughs> Wednesday 12 till 3, Thursday 12 till 8, Friday 12 till 10. Not open today. And down there is a creepy tunnel that leads down to uh, Key Street, which is another bar I used to go in. I'm not going there, I'm going down to the station because that's where the buses are and see if that quarter past seven bus turns up if not I'll have to get a taxi home must be rather a, an unexpected financial burden but like I said I'm on holiday so rather than have a week in Mallorca this is my holiday a day out in <laughs> historical Clitheroe yeah, you could shelter here from the rain yeah, so why not come to Clitheroe? A few interesting little shops and little alleyways, but if you're into history, there's a few items of interest. Old pubs, the castle, of course, with a big hall in the wall from Cromwell's cannons in the Civil War, 15 or no, 1640 something. Apparently, all the royalists were hauled up in the castle and said, Come out, you bastards! No, no, we're not coming out, no. So he started blasting his cannons at the wall. Broke through the wall, which was about ten foot thick, and then they gave up during the English Civil War. I'm busting for the toilet, I'll have to go, sorry. <laughs> I've not been for a wee all afternoon.